What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Site Visit. We're at our Back Bay project. Uh, and this week I actually posted a photo on my story of these True Fig outlets. So if you guys have been following this project since the very beginning, you know all of the work that we've put into with all these plastered in devices. But if you haven't, let's just recap what's been going on. So one of the first things that was really important here is that we wanted really flat walls. So we had to start with flattening with the framing, and then we got into talking about plastered in devices. Now we have the true fig outlets, and what it is, it's essentially a drywall core with a true fig box in the back of them. When we started installing them, we were talking to our plasterer, and one of the questions that came up was, well, these are designed to be joint compounded in, and it's typical drywall and we're dealing with blue board and plaster. You guys ask all the time, we've done a video on why we do blue board and plaster. Check that out if you, if you have questions, but we're doing blue board and plaster. And here we're actually doing a very traditional blue board and true two co plaster. So we're doing all gypsum based plaster. We're doing a scrap, basically one full coat to flatten the wall. So we've spent an enormous amount of time flattening every single wall. If I went around with a square in the corners, every corner square, everything is plumb, flat, level. There's a, a lot of work that went into it. Um, so we decided that we were going to replace the true fig plates with an actual blue board plate. Now the reason that we did that was due to the absorption rate. The question came up, it, it's, you know, we joked about it, it's probably this paranoid thought, but we said, you know what, if we're going this far, let's go this far. So we worked with our buddy Dobie over at Barney and Carey, and he actually CNC these pieces of blue board out to replicate what TrueFig provided originally. We went through and replaced all those plates. We set all of these boxes. And from there, we actually, you know, the guys over at Van Gerven actually figured out how to make the boxes adjustable. Now, at TrueFig, if you're watching this video, I would recommend digging into how they made these things adjustable because it made our life a lot easier. We wanted our box to be able to be adjusted in and out to make sure that we were aligned with other things. And what I mean by other things is like the corner bead. When we're setting our corner bead, everything has to be on the same plane. So if we're going wall to wall, Doug actually, you know, this is a perfect example. We have a, a, a finished true fig plate right here. We have a corner bead here and we have a corner bead here. So those are gonna be set by your door jam and, and so on and so forth. There's a plastic box in here that you basically plaster to. Now that ring being adjustable in and out allowed us to take a straight edge, put it from corner to corner and make sure that this was in plane with our, our corner beads. Now, realistically, you know, if it was slightly out, you could feather that plaster in, in either direction, it might work, but then you're dealing with this reglet detail down here and then that reglet needs to be completely flat with our baseboard. So rather than trying to work around something that, you know, doesn't have adjustability, we made them adjustable by flipping the screws around and, you know, Steve over at Van Gerven was able to figure that out and really set us up for success. From there, we plastered everything in. Um, and once everything was plastered in, that's it. I mean, realistically, the box is in, it's plastered and it's ready for devicing. Now, what we're looking at here is just a standard Decora uh, outlet. I actually have this little tool. It's basically a, a little mini plunger and they sent hundreds of them. I think it, one came with everything. But if I put that right on top here, I can pull that plate off. So this is just a standard decor outlet. Uh, this right here comes with the, the, the plate, and this is your, your box, and there's essentially four screws which will allow you to micro adjust this in and out for the final product. Um, it does not change where that mud flange is, it's simply just changing how this relates to that mud flange. Um, from there, we actually sent these out and, I, and had these paint, not sent them out, I shouldn't say that, uh, we actually painted these the same color as the wall um, while we were painting the wall, um, put them on the table, and then from there, they got these four little magnets in the back here. Really easy to install. And you just put it right there, and you're, you're done. And the nice thing is, if you ever have to touch this up, you can pull this off and touch it up. You're, and this, isn't, this is not part of the electrical device, so you can, in fact, paint these. You can um, 
I've seen them paper, papered. Uh, we oftentimes use them in the stone and faux paint them so it looks like the stone, uh, but they're removable and you're able to access all your electrical connections. Now over here, we actually have one, uh, a switch. This is not installed, so we'll actually have the same thing for the switch. Um, they offer a decor style, so it has an opening for decor rather than here, it doesn't have an opening, it just has the openings for your plug. Um, so you can put a standard decor. They also have a really cool round one, uh, which if you guys are interested in, I have a bunch of extra ones because unfortunately I, we accidentally ordered them for the job uh, prior to realizing what switching that we were doing. Um, so shoot me a DM on Instagram if you need some. Uh, really cool, they're just round and they actually go over the top of a standard decor switch, uh, essentially rocker on top of it, uh, but gives you this cool round look. Here that we're using a Savant lighting control system with dimming capabilities, we're unable to use the, those round rockers. We have them for the switches, the outlets, but the thing is, it's really interesting when you walk around the room, you know, yeah, there is this, this almost like pencil line around the plate covers, but they're very hidden. You know, they are paint matched. You know, some of them, you know, the electricians already set all of these, made sure everything's wired. You know, we'll obviously have some touch-ups on the plates. Um, you know, we can go back and like I said, we can adjust those four screws to make sure that they're completely planar. Like right here, we're probably a paper thickness, you know, above our wall so we can adjust that. But it really gives this almost invisible. It's, it's the first time we've used them so widespread in an entire job. Um, and I do think that it, it's really, it's really accomplished what we were looking for. Um, and if you were, you know, whatever color you're painting the room, that's really the nice part of this is that you don't have these white or stark plates on top of your finished surface. Um, you know, I'm looking at that one over there and obviously I'm guessing that someone may have put that one on without gloves on because you can see some fingerprints. But like I said, we'll go through, we, you know, we're nine, I call it 90% complete with paint. So we have touch-ups to do at the very end. Uh, that's the whole point of bringing in the electrician now is getting all these devices set, get everything installed. Um, we'll, we're gonna roll into floors next week. And that way at the very end, we'll come back and we'll do all our touch-ups. So we have actually four of these, they're phantom speakers, and you can hear that's a typical wall, but as I move over, it almost sounds like cardboard, and that's pretty much what it is. I don't know exactly what the material is, but what essentially got hap uh, what happened is that we plastered essentially to the flange of this phantom speaker uh, with a slight skim coat over it, and it gets painted over. Um, we can't fire them up right now, but when we do, you'll actually be pretty surprised at how well the audio quality is. And we, and we have two as well in the, the kitchen area. Uh, and the reason that we did that, we didn't want these big grills on the wall, um, but the one really important thing is I told you I'd tell you a story. Uh, a good friend of mine, John Marley, installed these in a build, uh, and the interior decorator came in, put a nail right through the middle of it to hang a picture. Um, Oddly enough, he put them in a location that he didn't think someone would be hanging a photo, but he was wrong. So it's something that we want to make sure that we clearly communicate to the client um, and maybe even show them that trick that as you move your hand across, you'll feel the difference between plaster and speaker. And before we go, I just want to pay, you know, respect to the guys at Van Gerven again. You know, they came up with these details. This, we have a high velocity HVAC system in here. Uh, typically what you're going to see is those small round circles, you know, in the plaster, in the floor, and we worked with them. We've got the linear slot diffusers, and there's actually two linear slots here, and the center section's fake. And what this is, is they've essentially fabricated these pieces of PVC mud flange to create these really nice, thin, linear slots for the HVAC, uh, for the high velocity, and it gives it a much cleaner look. They even went as far as to paint all the inside black. It looks like we got a little touch up to do, or maybe it's just a little plaster. But either way, it's a really, really clean look. Uh, we have them here. We actually have them underneath. Uh, it's just a really, really nice look. It goes along with our True Fig plastered in plates. Uh, and lastly, you can see over there that return grill, same thing. Everything's plastered in. There's no, there's no flange on it. Um, and I know I've talked about this a lot on this project, but you, you're, we're starting to see these details come together. So it's really exciting to see, you know, the, the fruits of our labor and just really how well everything is coming together. Uh, and 
honestly, it, it's, it's a team effort and everyone that's been involved has really understood what the goal is uh, and we're accomplishing that. So, so stay tuned for next week. We'll have a new NS Builders podcast at the beginning of the week. We got Ken's show revealed. He'll have another episode and then we'll see another episode of Site Visit. We'll see you then.